Victor Fakuya Fakaya um, is going to talk about the herders and farmers violence in Nigeria. Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Victor Fakoya. I'm originally from Nigeria. I'm currently an instructor in the Department of Political Science, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where I'm also a PhD candidate. I am presenting my topic on Hardest and farmers violence in Nigeria, the prospects and challenges for the traditional conflict resolution mechanisms in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, I will make this the, I want you to take a look at this picture. It is a picture that shows a herder in Nigeria, uh, a Fulani man, could be a, a Bororo Fulani, could be any other kind of Fulani or Fube Fulani. Of course, there are so many sects, uh, so many uh, type of Fulanis all over West African countries. The Fulanis in the past, when following their cattle, normally go around with stick. They have their mantles around their neck with their personal effects. So there is a reason why we now have Fulanis brandishing uh, sophisticated weapons such as uh, AK-47 and general purpose machine guns, GPMG, that belongs into the military armaments. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa and the largest black country in the world. Uh, though there are controversies about what actually the population of Nigeria is, due to uh, government corruptions and manipulation of population figures for political reasons. But we believe that Nigeria today has at least 100 million of uh, population. In the beginning, when the colonialists, when British colonized Nigeria, the British uh, ruled Nigeria as separate entities. There was no country as Nigeria. The country now known as Nigeria uh, was carried out of the name called Niger area. Niger is a river in the area of West Africa where we now have Nigeria. So there are other rivers, but two prominent rivers that are affected, I mean, that are mentioned almost in all political uh, conflicts in Nigeria today are River Niger and Benue. And also we have added Ni Niger Delta area. We have the Niger, Niger River, the Delta Rivers estuaries in the south. When the colonialists created Nigeria map after the amalgamation of 1914, in 1947, when Nigerian, uh, Nigerian colonialists introduced regionalism, they created a map that gave advantage to the north and disadvantage to the south. The excuse then was that the creation of the map was along the uh, natural boundaries of River Niger and River Benue. So the map essentially gave the north more than three-fifths of Nigerian landmass. So geographically, the north is more than half of the old Nigeria. There were three regions, the northern region, the western region, the southwestern regions, and the southeastern region. That was before 1963 creation of the Midwestern region. But the three, the three southern regions all put together is just the size of one third of the northern region. So what the colonialists created inadvertently was a system where one region and one ethnic group is able to dominate power forever. Because unless there are structural changes there is no way the South can compete with the North, politically, even in the, uh, the ballot boxes. So the main occupation of the Northern Fulanese and other houses 
uh, farming, but mostly cattle rearing. The southerners, the major occupation of the southerners was, is farming. So that was before the introduction of modern uh, industrialization and all other kind of economic system, before oil was discovered in Nigeria. After oil was discovered in the late 1950s, at the southern, southwestern part, southeastern part of Nigeria, the control of oil led to another form of power struggle. The North that are threatening to secede from Nigeria unless it is given 50% representation in the Federal House of Assembly now become the strongest advocate for unity of Nigerian state. What are the problems that I am exploring in this uh, paper? The Fulani issue is not a new issue. For time immemorial, Fulani main occupation has been cattle rearing. But after 1999, when Nigerians, through the Constituent Assembly, demanded that there should be rotation of power in Nigeria, that one section of Nigeria cannot continue to rule forever. The northern Nigeria realizing the, the determination of the southern regions to either stay if they can reach compromise or secede from the corporate existence, agreed that there will be rotation of major offices, including the presidency, the senate, and the speaker of the House of Assembly. So based on that agreement, Nigerians unanimously agree that the southwestern region should produce the first president. And for the first time in history, the two contestants for the two political parties in Nigeria were both southwestern Yorubas. After the inauguration of President Obasanjo in 1999, the, uh, the northern states that were predominantly Muslims introduced the Sharia legal system. The Sharia, Sharia legal system, uh, after an extensive study, I realized shouldn't have been a threat to the southern most Christian dominated regions. But unfortunately, because of the timing of the introduction of the Sharia legal system, immediately after a Yoruba Christian was uh, inaugurated as president, the southern regions and states started suspecting that the northerners were simply reacting to power shift, that they regret agreeing to allow rotation of power based on six geopolitical zones that were created afterward. So whether it is true that uh, introduction of Sharia legal system in the North was for political purpose or not, what we found is that after that, we see many militant groups rising from different sections of the country. In the Southwest, we have the Odua People's Congress, meaning that, uh, I mean, which was created from the traditional indigenous uh, Yoruba group. Uh, they, their purpose was to defend the interests of the Yorubas. That was kind of anachronism because people feel that you have a Yoruba president, why do Yorubas need to defend themselves when the president is a person from the southwestern region? In the east, we have the movement for the survival of Biafra. Biafra was the name given to the, state, to the uh, succeeding state that led to the civil war in Nigeria between 1967 and 1970. Of course, after the federal government defeated the Biafra, uh, Nigeria believed that the country should be reintegrated, I mean, the Biafrans should be reintegrated and shall, there should be reconciliation. So it was a surprise that after enduring many decades of military rule, the Igbos in the eastern Nigeria went back to agitation for secession from the country. The suspicion is that the reason why they're asking for secession is so that they can monopolize the oil uh, sectors that uh, the, the oil producing states and so that they can become the only the owner and the, the, the power that control oil in the region being that they are the dominant ethnic group in the southeastern region. So the Ogoni people also form the movement for the survival of Ogoni people because these are people that have been impoverished even though their region produced the wealth of Nigeria. 
oil is the oil, contrib oil contributes uh, about to about 80 percent of Nigerian uh, revenue, and yet the people that live in the region where 80 percent of Nigerian wealth come from are the most impoverished. They have no infrastructure. Their lands for farming have been destroyed, and their waters have been polluted. Uh, the government seems to be paying uh, deaf attention to the, the yearning of these people. So, of course, the youth in this region formed a, a militant group and started kidnapping Westerners and federal government employees in order to gain attention of the federal government. Their actions were met with tough military uh, reactions from the federal government. Uh, there was first an order of shoot at sight. And rather than the federal government negotiating with these people, bringing them to table and asking for what they want, the federal government used the military force to uh, stop the agitation of the uh, youth from the southeastern region of Niger, of the Delta area, which include the Delta State, the Edo State, the River State, Cross River State, all these regions, I mean, all these states where the wealth of Nigeria come from. But surprisingly, Immediately after that, the, uh, we, we saw a new group emerging from the northern Nigeria called the, the, the Fulani Headers. That was the name given to them. They don't call themselves Fulani Headers. Uh, in 2016, the chief of army staff of Nigeria went into the news media and, and said, said publicly that the Fulani that we see brandishing uh, sophisticated weapons are non-Nigerians. Because Nigeria belongs to the 16 groups of West African countries that have a pact called ECOWAS, which means that just like, e, like EEC, citizens of any of these countries can go from one country to the other in pursuit of uh, economic, uh, uh, for, uh, in pursuit of job and economic sustenance. But the question that one is that many people have asked that the federal government and the military have not been able to answer is what is the most, what is the most important responsibility of the federal government? The security of life and property. If the federal government, if a, 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 a Lieutenant General, Chief of Army Staff of a country is saying openly that there are invaders coming from the northern state, northern countries of Chad, Mali, and Niger to his own country with truck full of weapons, and they are doing nothing about it. That's an indictment against the essence of having a federal government in the country. But these uh, hiders, what they do is that, uh, uh, a, a, aside, aside from what, the, what these hiders are doing is that, contrary to what we know to be their practice of following their cartoons along the paths that they can be seen visibly, they now go through the thick forest, and from one, for, one village to another, they go through the farms and destroy, they allow their cartoons to eat the arable crops of the farmers and destroy the farms, when they are challenged by these farmers, they turn it to a war. And not just a hypothetical war, they use weapons like AK-47 that I show in that first picture and general purpose machine gun on farmers whose uh, only weapon are machetes. So they will kill these farmers, kidnap those who they can kidnap, raise their, their communities in fire. This havoc has been going on since uh, the return of Nigeria to democracy in 1999, and unfortunately, it is getting worse, and the federal government in Nigeria has done nothing. The only response of federal government in 2016 was to introduce a bill that people thought was a reward for the uh, criminals. This bill, I, I, I designed a model to describe what this bill is. This bill implied that uh, if you commit crime, which is chaos, then you will be given carrots. And after that, there will be reconciliation between the perpetrators of crime and those, the victim of crime. And why I, I designed this model like this is because the federal government introduced a bill called National Grazing Reserve, uh, National Grazing Routes and Reserve Bill in 2016. What this bill does is that instead of federal government clamping down on these people that are killing uh, farmers, violating their rights of, of using their own land, what the federal government did was to reward them by 
forcing all state governments we, in a country that is a federal country without consultation with the state government, the local government, the traditional rulers, and the representative of the victims. The federal government created a bill that will reward these people by saying that they should create a reserve in every state of Nigeria and that they should create a grazing route. This grazing route will be in the forest where nobody, where the military or the police cannot patrol or monitor the activities of the herders. So even if the herders commit any crime in the, in the course of them transiting from one village to another, there is no way for anybody to discover this. And the federal government in Nigeria is not uh, buoyant enough to have uh, sophisticated means of patrolling them, maybe using drone or helicopters or plane. This will not even be sustainable because what the federal government has done is somebody violated another person, a, a group of people, a, a, an ethnic group violated the right of another ethnic group, and rather than the gov federal government showing interest in the right of the victim, placating them by rewarding them for what has been destroyed and the life that they have lost, the federal government forced uh, took the side that seems like it is supporting the perpetrators of violence by saying the reason they are killing, the reason they are destroying people's farm is because of the drought in the semi-arid area of the north where they came from. And because there is no water and forage for their animals, they have to find it anywhere they can find it. So since Nigeria is a country that allows allow all citizens to live anywhere they are, rightly so, they can go anywhere with their cattle. But nobody is saying they cannot come to the south with their cattle. What people are saying is that they should, uh, they should adopt ranching. They should buy land or get land from the local, uh, the, the, the communities wherever they go, and use this land for ranching. In the United States, that has a lot of agricultural practices, you don't see cattle. The United States produce more beef than any country in the world. You don't see cattle roaming around the street. Nigeria that produced less than 10% of cattle, even for the, uh, for the African continent, not to talk of the world, now says that cattle can roam around everywhere in Nigeria, even on the expressway, on the major roads, around your house, in your farm. Farms, farming and cattle rearing are antithetical. Animals will eat crops if they find it. So that's the reason why grazing anywhere that they found it is, is, is not a good pra economic practice. Federal government is interested in protecting the economic interests of the herders, but the government is not saying anything about farming, even though it is the same government that is preaching diversification of economy through improvement of farming. Now, farming products are being destroyed into the tune of billions of naira and dollars every year, and federal government has not said anything about the plight of the farmers. Rather, the effort is concentrated on the uh, on the on the others. So in reaction, the states that have been affected created what they call anti-grazing bills. And their own anti-grazing bill, if you might, just one second, is like this. It says that if you commit crime, there will be consequences, then there, there can be reconciliation, and then there could be cohabitation. Neither of these two models will work. And I listened to a presenter in the room earlier that talked about the alternative dispute resolution. That is what I am proposing, that there, the, neither the state, uh, the, both the state approach and the federal government approach are both state-centric modern mechanisms that cannot solve traditional problems. These problems are not just economic or political. They are inherently sociocultural problems that can be resolved only when we bring all the group together and in the, in the, in the mode of alternative dispute resolution, forge a way to know what both parties want and design a model that can work for both the farmers and the others. Thank you.